Okay. Let me check if we are live here. Aha! We are. All right, I'm going to pull this up. Uh, and you guys are probably going to see me invite a few people. Uh, the first couple of minutes of these live streams are always kind of weird um, because it's just me doing like the preliminary crap uh, that I have to do in order to get people to 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 see that I'm live because uh, uh, my shit doesn't particularly get um, sent out to everybody all the time. Um, per, you, you know, even even if you're notified for it, sometimes it doesn't happen. So, uh, pardon the old delay, friends. Uh, but uh, I'm going to invite some folks. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I know you guys are, this is kind of the most boring part of all of this is watching me do all the preliminary crap to get people to come out. Hey, if you're watching, if you are watching, if you do, fi if you do find this, uh, s send an invite to some people, uh, share it around, you know, um, tell, tell some humans, uh, that might enjoy this to, to come and enjoy it with us. We're, we're doing it live. I will be able to talk to you. So give, give me a few minutes, uh, to get all this stuff, um, taken care of. And then we will, we will kick into some of these stories Got some pretty good ones. If you can see that description, you can read that description. Uh, you can uh, prepare yourself for some of these stories, I guess. I guess that's a, that's the thing that you can do. Uh, and one of the things I will be doing is um, leave a comment. And what the way that I'm going to keep doing this is so that we don't keep interrupting, because I get scatterbrained very quickly. Um, is I will, uh, I will read through the comments at the very end and do a cue and response. And there's a fun, cool thing that I can do with the comments as well. Um, that I can, I can definitely show you guys here in, uh, in a second. Um, gotta make sure I invite a few more folks that I know tune into these things, uh, on a semi-regular basis. So I don't want to not invite them the 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 chattier people uh that that enjoy that enjoy content like this you guys how's everybody sunday is lee, lee tell, tell me how your sunday is that's how we'll start this thing tell tell me about your sunday what are you guys planning to do are you guys is it is it a lazy sunday or is it kind of a good good sunday um So check this out. So Vincent, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the comments. Uh, we can. Oh, look at that! Boom, Vincent Didiano. He says story time. That should pop up on the screen. I, I I'm, I'm hoping. So let's. Ah, oh, there it is. It popped up. There's a delay on the um, from my live thing <laughs> to watching it actually live. Um, so Vincent, there we're, there are no stories in this. This is all serious business, Vincent. These are all serious business things. Um, so I'm going to get into it in just, just a minute here. End of each. Let's see. Does that go through? Yeah, there it is. There we go. So leave a comment comment back at the end of the segment and I'll put them up like that too so everybody can see who says it um, if you do like leave a giant paragraph um, it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna particularly show up uh, all the way but I will I will be able to see it I will be able to see it so um, Jay. Jay is dealing with stoicism, Marxist juxtaposition. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Jay, Jay, you always have like the most interesting fucking things that you read, man. 
Like I every every time you post the link, I'm like, that's something I want to talk about for 17 hours. <laughs> Thank you. You have you have some of the most interesting things um uh, that uh that i've seen so <laughs> thank you for sharing that brother i appreciate it um i'm gonna put this little banner up as we get more people joining in uh and i think we are gonna we are gonna uh get into get into some of these uh stories here uh like comment share like share subscribe is that the thing that i'm supposed to say yeah, I never know. I, I'm fucking terrible at it, uh, at, at, at talking about that sort of shit. So um, let me, oh, you know what I should do is put that into the event that I, that I have. I have an event for this thing, you guys. I have an event uh, that, I, that I made specifically to like share these live events and I totally forgot to do that. <laughs> I forgot to put it, share it into that. Uh, so I'm going to share it in some places. Um, oh, man. So here we go. Let's share this, share this out to a few places do 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 got a couple of groups that i share in this is this is the you're you guys are you guys are witnessing uh what it's like to be an an independent artist right now is what you guys are witnessing this is this is all the shit that i have to do before i do anything and this is part of the reason why i get worried when i do live streams because i'm like is this going to be too boring are people just going to tune out within the first few minutes because I'm just kind of like hitting, get, getting, getting this thing shared into various different places, uh, and people are going to be like, "This bullshit, fuck this guy, <laughs> this guy sucks." <laughs> so I just like get kind of paranoid that uh, that no one's going to give a shit. <laughs> And be like, when is he gonna talk about some of this shit? Why is he saying enough things? I'm not interested. Why is he talking about that Tiger King thing? By the way, the more people tell me to watch that Tiger King thing, uh, the less I want to fucking watch it because uh, because I, I'm, I I I get contrarian about these like pop culture things. Um, that, that people like tell me to watch. I, just, I, I don't know what it is. I just, every time somebody is like, you got to watch this thing, man, it's the greatest thing in the whole fucking world. I'm just like, God, I don't fucking know. Maybe, maybe, you know, like I just, uh, I just don't, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not very good at keeping up with that sort of stuff. Oh boy. All right. So I got to, Go into the event manually, I guess. Uh, oh, do I not have permission because I'm the page? I don't know. I hate I hate fucking dealing with stupid Facebook shit. Sorry, guys. We got one. I got one more thing to do, and then we will be we will be getting into these stories. Wow, there we go. That should do it. Once that posts, we're going to get into some of these stories. All right. There it is. Okay. We got some folks tuning in. How are you? How are you doing? Um, we're going to, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this banner at the bottom. Go back to the comments uh vincent dude it's insane i almost didn't watch it i know but everybody keeps talking about it and it bothers me <laughs> the, the more people say stuff about it the more i'm like i'm not gonna do it i'm gonna i'm gonna be the cool indie kid you know fucking as i say that with my foo fighter shirt on uh this is my favorite band in the world and uh yeah 
So, uh, and, and if you don't believe that the Foo Fighters are the greatest uh, band in the world, that's okay. It's it's okay to be wrong uh, and look foolish in public uh, because they are. They are the greatest band in the world. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Enough about the Tiger King. Uh, there, there are no tigers or kings in this. That's what I say. Okay, folks. We're going to dive into some of these stories. We're getting right into it. Uh, I, I, I have three stories, as I, as I usually do, and um, hopefully this won't be like a seven-hour live stream. Um, but I think the first two are going to be pretty short. Um, and like I said, leave a comment, and then I will come back to the end, and I'll do, I'll do one of these so it'll, it'll kind of show, you know, hey, that's who said it, so we all kind of know. Um, who's saying what and and what I'm responding to, so it's not a mystery. Okay, so the first story is um, we have uh, we have a victory dealing with the the Dakota Access Pipeline, DAPL. We have a a, a victory in that the federal courts um, have said that the permits uh, that uh, that they approved, that the Army Corps of Engineers approved, the United States Army Corps of Engineers approved those federal permits violated the National Environmental Policy Act. Uh, what does the National Environmental Policy Act do? It promotes the enhancement of the environment. This was something that was put into place in 1970 under motherfucking Richard Nixon. That's right. A Nixonian law, a Nixonian act has shown that the North Dakota accident the, the the Dakota Access Pipeline is actually violating environmental codes. Like that's amazing. It's a bit like like something that a Republican wrote forty years ago, or is it fifty years ago? I think fifty years ago is coming back to bite pro Republican people in the ass. That's fucking hilarious. That also shows you like how far the Republican Party has gone, right? Like the Republican Party has gone so far right that Richard Nixon is like a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a crook, also a conservative. <laughs> like that's that's where things have gone at this point. But that's kind of awesome. Like they like they basically prove that the construction of this pipeline um, is 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 not good for the environment. Um, so the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, now have to do a environmental impact study um, to to basically see how they violated the law. Uh, and the <laughs> the U.S. Corps, of, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, is being chastised by these federal courts for granting these permits to let to let this pipeline be built in the first place. Right? The courts are just like, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> Which is kind of hilarious to me that the, U the Army Corps of Engineers were like, I don't know, like pipelines are people. Is that is that a is that a viable excuse? Are are we buying this in the courts? No. Okay, we're gonna sit down. We're just gonna sit down and be quiet for a while. <laughs> like that's that's what it is. And they and you can prove right. Here's the thing: is like I don't think you need to do extensive environmental impact studies because there are already so many provable ways to 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 show that uh, that these pipelines are bad for the environment. That they constantly keep fucking over the environment, right? Like the Sunoco pipeline um, that that's up in in the in, in the the North Dakota uh, area. Where it, the 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 Sunoco pipeline has had 276 incidents and caused $53 million in property damage. $53 million in property damage, 276 incidences, and we're we're still like, yeah, we need to keep building more of these. In fact, we got to extend more of these fucking things. We got to build more. I know there's like a lot of, but we need more of them, okay? This, this, the pipeline's... I mean, if we don't have these pipelines, how are people going to know how big America's dick really is? Okay, the pipeline. I don't. If you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but okay, listen. Okay, the pipeline. It's like a like a penis, because there's a huge like. Do you get it? Is that something you under? I, and sometimes, as we all know, with penises, they leak, and that's just something that that happens. Okay, that's just we're all going to have to be okay with it. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> They've also proved that it's one of the lowest performing safety efforts in history. 
<laughs> like having these pipelines is one of the lowest performing safety records. Like they just they're just terrible for all we keep these pipelines and yet and yet uh I don't get hired back at certain comedy clubs or certain venues across the country because I hurt a rich person's feelings. A rich person that probably funds these fucking pipelines. <laughs> It's totally cool. And by me saying, hey, these pipelines are crazy and shouldn't be built. They're like, how dare he say my I have a lot of investment tied into these pipelines. OK, investments that are tied directly to my penis by how big that pe pipeline is. And these environmental impact studies are going to show what the, the, the same thing that we've been yelling about for the last decade and a half. Right, like that, these pipelines contaminate the water and the soil. They make the, they they poison the atmosphere that we're uh, that that we need to, you know, like breathe. <laughs> Just funsies, but this is a huge win for the Sioux tribe uh, that's in that area. And um, really, what this could do is this could have some very large ripple effects um, that push back against uh, Alec, which is the uh, I'm going to. Try to remember this. It's the American Legislative Executive Council, I believe, which is a Koch brother funded um, legal council um, corporation. Like they basically write these boilerplate laws and hand them off to states and and pay off politicians to enact these laws. Um, so one of the one of the laws that they've they've done that to, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, maybe like in the middle of February or something. Uh, but basically. Uh, these laws criminalize protests, and the boilerplate for these laws is um, is is that the if you protest a critical infrastructure such as a pipeline or um, you know anything that uh, like a crude oil factory or whatever, um, or and even even up to telecom like cell towers, um, all that sort of stuff. If you uh, if you protest that, you are considered uh, a criminal because you're going against um, critical infrastructure. That's what they deemed, right? So what does that involve? That The boilerplate says that it involves uh, some amount of a fine and some amount of jail time or prison time. So like Louisiana, I think, don't quote me on this because I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time remembering exactly what it is. I think it's like $100,000 in fines and up to six years in prison for for protesting a pipeline uh and really what this is this this law is straight up 100 percent unconstitutional yours that's part of the first amendment like the very first one um you know so uh that's what these laws are these laws these laws are being put into place um and now now that we've now that the courts have gone you know, against this pipeline, against this thing, um, this is great. This this means that we might see a ripple effect in pushing back against this law. Uh, we might see a bunch of, um, you know, uh, climate change activists and protesters in these groups, like, get out of prison. Uh, and realistically, like, what they're claiming critical infrastructure is, is kind of bullshit. Right, like real critical critical infrastructure is us, is people, not fucking pipelines and cell towers. You know, like I get it, we all like our cell towers and our Wi-Fi and all that stuff. But like, if tomorrow we find out that the the cell towers are like killing, I don't know, like small babies or something like that, like I think we would instantly be like, we gotta protest these towers, <laughs> we gotta get these fucking things down and figure out like a new way to communicate with each other long range. Like maybe maybe this is a bad idea. Right. Like it's it's these are these things are not critical infrastructure. We should be we should be encouraging ourselves to look for newer, um, better uh, sources of energy, more renewable sources of energy, uh, be smarter about it um, and, uh, uh, you know, stop stop killing the environment around us. Uh, that's I mean, we're stewards of the environment in and of itself. That's that's wholly what I believe. I think that the, we are you know, stewards of the environment. We are stewards of this planet. That's why we have the cognitive leap. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy, whatever it is. Um, 
But, you know, I don't think we're doing a good job by uh, funding pipelines that that cause fifty six million dollars in property damage in the course of a decade. <laughs> like, fuck you, <laughs> you know, like that's not that's not necessary, you, you know. Uh, OK, so uh, new comment, Amy. Hello. I am live. I am I'm alive. Uh, I am here. Uh, Amy is a, is a phenomenal musician. Everybody should go check out Amy every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Before you tune into this show, uh, you can you can check out Amy. She performs uh, incredible music. She's a, she's a wonderful musician. Um, and she's donating. If you donate to Amy, I believe she's doing a thing where she's donating uh, what you donate to other artists and other musicians that are um, that are, are, are furloughed because of the the crisis that we are dealing with so uh yay amy everybody say yay amy uh you don't have to type it into the comments just say it and then i think we'll all we'll all feel the feel the energy of that <laughs> uh if you're just tuning in thank you guys for for tuning in we're doing some uh we're, we're talking about some stories uh and uh we're, we're gonna yell about yell about some of the things that are happening in our in our society in our uh in our community <laughs> see bread deletes yay me <laughs> um our second story i'm i'm gonna read part of this uh too so but our second story uh i was was sent to me by my good friend mark viola a very funny comedian named mark viola but he sent me this link and i for for like half a second i didn't believe that this story was true uh, but apparently it is because it's like in the Pe Pennsylvania state le state legislator website. Um, and I got to look this woman's name up, but, uh, we are, um, at tomorrow, actually, uh, March 30th, uh, Pennsylvania state representative, Stephanie Borowitz, who I'm not particularly familiar with, uh, wants March 30th, 2020 to be recognized as a state day of humiliation fasting and prayer everybody take a minute take a minute to absorb all of that uh, I, uh all of what i said uh this is this is part of our reality that we're living in this is not a story from an alternate timeline uh where you know ted cruz did become president and figured out how to make the bible into uh into law that's not what we're living in this is uh this is just reality there that that what a state legislative legislator uh decided to say that we need a day of uh, humiliation <laughs> uh here's why she says it's it's dealing with the with with covid um is that this is punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptions uh, for our presumptuous sins, for our presumptuous sins. Let me read that one more time. Punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins. Now, I doubt very much uh, that what she is referring to is the sins of uh, of capitalism, is is the sins of un of an unfettered capitalistic system uh, that that literally sucks the world dry. Uh, by uh, uh, you know extinguishing its resources and turning its natural resources into uh, points of profit uh, and uh, and does not help uh, the the people within it that uh, the capitalistic system itself depends on to stay alive and is turned into a a, a cannibalistic force of uh, a genuine evil. Uh, I doubt that's what she means. I doubt that's what she means, right? I feel like a, I feel like a lot of this has to do with. Uh, with with probably masturbation uh probably that would be that would be that would be my guess around it but uh here here's the here's the uh here's the actual thing uh i want to read i want to read as much of this as i possibly can because without just laughing uh, I'll, pretty much all of this stuff starts with whereas which i already kind of think is funny uh because you could have just written it let, let just like a, but fine. Uh, whereas on March 30th, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed April 30th, 1863, as a national day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And whereas since March 11th, 2020, the United States has been in a time of crisis. And whereas during the pandemic of 2020, 
the ensuing uncertainty and anxiety of this time, Pennsylvanians may have may be comforted by turning to a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer, as well as wise words of our great President Abraham Lincoln. And whereas the House of Representatives devoutly recognizes the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God in all of the affairs of men and nations. First of all, I will say that uh, this National Day of Humiliation and Fasting uh, and Prayer or whatever that Abraham Lincoln pro proclaimed uh, was after the Emancipation Proclamation. And this is post-Emancipation Proclamation. Um, so I think really what happened is that Lincoln got a little cocky. You know, he was like, boy, that speech really killed. That, that speech nailed it. Well, I feel like a lot of people are going to be talking about this for a really long time. You know, I feel pretty good about it. What else can I do? Uh, maybe I'll tell people that they need to be humiliated about themselves over this slavery thing. And uh, and that'll probably uh, eradicate slavery, uh, probably on a global level, uh, by telling people that they need to feel super amounts of shame at themselves and punish themselves, you know, for these presumptuous sins. And uh, what we, you know, and I feel like this might have backfired on them because what if uh, John Wilkes Booth was uh, was humiliated? And uh, and that's really why he did it. We don't know. You know, that could be it. Um, also, the the House of Representatives devoutly recognizes the supreme authority and just government of Almighty God. Isn't that like just massively in violation of separation of church and state like that? That like it's not the government of Almighty God. It's the government of the people by the people. I haven't even been a citizen for that long. And I fucking know that. This person is a state representative. Holy shit. Just based on her writing that alone, she should be fucking fired, right? She should be like removed from office. <laughs> they should like send her away and then they should point at her and be like, shame, shame for not understanding basic eighth grade civics. Shame. <laughs> and see how she fucking likes that shit. <laughs> okay, so we read on. We read on. Uh, whereas it is the duty of nations as well as of men to their own dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow. And whereas we assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are only blessed whose God is the Lord. And whereas in so much as what his divine law, nations like individuals are subject to punishments and chastisement in this world. Holy shit, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Okay, there's a lot there. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy, folks. Um, we got to confess our sins and transgressions according to the Holy Scriptures. What if I don't? Uh, what if I don't think that the Holy Scriptures are the thing that I uh, believe in? What if? What if I'm a pagan? What if I'm a Muslim? You know, we have they have different Holy Scriptures. What if you're Jewish? You know, I mean, technically that's all the Abrahamic gods. So, I mean, that's a lot to go off of, right? So, do you do you go? by confession of sins from Old Testament, New Testament, and Quran. A lot of contradictions just within that alone, you know? I grew up in a Hindu household. We got, we got different ways to, to deal with our holy scriptures are different. And, uh, you know, our, our God is uh, multiple. We have a lot of gods. Some people worship the earth. Pagans, what are you going to do about that, you know? I feel like the earth uh, is is like, hey, uh, if there's too many of you, I'm going to, you know, have to do something about it. Uh, either tell you guys to stop fucking for like a little bit or just, you know, you guys did invent condoms. Maybe wear those like a lot more, like a lot more, uh, you know, like what if what if that's one of the ways that the earth decides to evolve us is natural condoms? I don't know. You know, is that would that be considered punishment? According to Stephanie Borowitz, although that is acknowledging evolution and that's a problem, uh, and there there's nothing about that, right? 
she also says the nations like individuals are subject to punishment and chastisement in this world. Oh my goodness. Great. So now we have divine intervention meeting the prison industrial complex. That's the fucking problem. <laughs> this didn't happen because fucking somebody, you know, some fucking 14 year old jacked off to some weird porn that he had the dad experienced before. This happened because there's too many humans and we have a, 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 a virus that knows how to spread from other animals to humans to other humans. And it spreads really fast. Because, uh, because you know, that's just we've we've created a hyper sterilized world. So now it's just like every time something new comes up, we're like, holy fuck, we gotta shut it all down, and we freak out, and we don't understand how to deal with fear. And this isn't helping. This isn't fucking helping. Ugh. And right as I brought up fear, here's the next part. Uh, whereas in so much as we know that his divine law... Okay, that's the part I just read, sorry. Uh, where, whereas may we just justly fear that the off, awful calamity of the pandemic, which now desolates his com this commonwealth, may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our pre presumptuous sins to the need needful end of our national reformation as a whole people? Question mark. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think we need to be afraid that it's going to be like the end of all of us. I, I, I think we need to very much be concerned that there needs to be some major national reform. I think that's correct. Uh, but is this, I don't know if this is as apocalyptic as what people are saying it is. Um, so let's continue. Uh, whereas we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven, and we have preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. What the fuck? No, we haven't. We haven't. We haven't had the choices. Bounty is is working two fucking jobs and not being able to make end meet ends meet. That's choices. Choices. Bounties of heaven. You know, is 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 fucking the seven wars that the last four presidencies have started. That's not showing peace and prosperity. We have like the largest economic divide in this country over 30 years of politics, like, and religiosity. You know, you, you have, you have assholes like Joel Olstein who won't open up their churches when there is a hurricane. How about that? How, what, what are you, what are you doing for that? <laughs> Shouldn't he feel humiliated for that? For being a huckster? Whereas we have grown in numbers, wealth, and power, no, as no other nation has ever grown. That's true. Uh, whereas, but we have forgotten God, and we have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. No, no, they didn't. Dude, there, there have been multiple wars in the name of God. And in the Old Testament, he just fucking destroyed a bunch of shit all the time. Like all of these religions do. All of these religions just have a God that's like, I don't... I don't like what's happening. So I will uh, fire and brimstone, fire and brimstone. <laughs> this, this whole fucking thing is just filled with so many contradictions. Uh, man, the mental gymnastic ones has to do to, to write something like this is amazing. Uh, whereas we have vainly imagined the deceitful deceitfulness in all our hearts that these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and a virtue of our own. Whereas intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of, of redeeming and persevering grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Do you feel like this is all just kind of encouraging God to be a helicopter parent? Like sometimes you just got to let your kids go and figure shit out on, the, on, their, on, on their own. You know, and, and, and the, all of this is just like, God, can you just help us? I know we're we're 10,000 years old, but, but, but maybe you can, you can kind of pat us on the butt. Here we go. We'll, we'll wrap this up because it's going to switch the wording on it. Whereas it behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended power to confess our national sins and pray for clemency and forgiveness. Therefore be it. Uh, kind of sounds like God's a little bit of a snowflake. Uh, 
resolved that ha the House of Representatives designate March 30th, 2020 as a state day of humiliation, fasting and prayer in Pennsylvania. And be it further resolved that the House of Representatives requests all Pennsylvanians to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits to unite at their respective homes in keeping the day holy to the Lord and devoted to the humble discharge of religious religious duties proper to that solemn occasion and be it further, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna read the last paragraph because I think you guys get it. I think you guys get it. Um, When has shame ever worked? Do you guys do you guys know at, at, at any point has shaming somebody ever fucking worked? Like has it has it ever led to anything positive? Because I don't really know that it has. Like when you shame somebody, you isolate them. Like you make them you make them go inside. You make them feel bad about it, and usually, like that just leads to further negative behaviors. So I have never seen shame actually be used as a as a positive course for change or progress. So why are we saying that this is going to work now, right? Like why are we going to say that oh by atoning and being humiliated in ourselves for the way that we live our no that's not what fucking causes this virus like, uh, and, and that's not what's going to get us out of it either. You know what you know what caused us to be in the situation that we're in poor planning and having no fucking plan at all. Hubris is what causes us to be in this thing. Like it doesn't fucking help anybody. It just makes things so much worse. This is so th not only so not only is this a violation of separation of church and state, uh, and and it shows that a state representative of of my state, Pennsylvania, does not know basic eighth grade motherfucking civics by calling this a the government of the Almighty God. Um, but she also just doesn't know basic psychology of like, you don't shame and humiliate somebody you, that turns them in, inward and either leads to, to worse situations like self-harm or outward violence towards, towards being extra, extradited. That's not the right word. Um, by being, you know, pushed out of a community by being pushed out of a society. So now they act outward from it. It's, there's never a fucking, never, um, has has been proven to be a positive effect of, of shame it's like uh, like that's that that was the whole basis of call out culture and every single time that happens all these people just end up doubling down on their shitty behaviors anyway like this doesn't fucking work oh man all right let's look at some comments um brenda hi brenda uh, I've seen memes about how Satan is doing this to destroy us and God and God is doing this to bring us together. So they tag teamed us. Right. Yeah. Which one is it? Is Satan and God working together? <laughs> They're just like boys in this, you know, like after a couple thousand years, God's like, hey, bro, I might have kicked you out prematurely. You won't fuck with these primates for a little while. <laughs> you want to hang out and fuck with these primates for a bit? Jay. Oh, sweet Jay. Humiliation. I'm sitting at my desk without pants, half drunk, bruised, brushing sp spilled chili off my search. I don't see how much farther I can be humiliated. Look, that's just, that's just a standard day for me. If I, if I am not spilling something on my clothing, then I don't think I've had a good day. You know, that just means that you have a, you have a heightened level of appreciation for what you're eating. That's, that's just heightened level of appreciation. Um, and it, I don't, I say, you know, to to save on water um, and like laundry costs and stuff, everybody should be eating naked all the time. That's what I say. That's just logical. That's just better for the environment. You know, that's just what we need to do. Uh, Brenda, a recent experience of humiliation is one of the risk factors for suicide. Not sure we, we should be dishing it out. Yeah, exactly. It 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 make like feeling terrible about yourself is a per like you can make a distinction that X behavior is not good and why you shouldn't do it. But, um, you know, it, like, like you said, it's, it's a uh, risk factor for the suicide. So yeah, uh, I, I think you can make, you can make that distinction behavior, bad person, you'll be fine, right? Like you can still be a good person because you can come out of it. You can redeem yourself. Uh, Mark Viola, to be fair, uh, every day one lives in Pittsburgh is a day of humiliation. Fuck you, Mark. <laughs> 
<laughs> I am I am by no means a yinzer, and I am not somebody that uh, am super like I have like a lot of civic pride or anything. But I do like Pittsburgh. There's always cool shit to to do here. You know, like I started comedy here. I met some fucking cool ass people here. Uh, I've recorded several stand up comedy albums here. There's stuff. There's fun stuff to do in Pittsburgh. It's just it. Honestly, this feels like when I went to a very liberal arts Catholic college uh, where I pissed off a lot of nuns. Go figure. Suppress, press. And, uh, <laughs> and like, uh, I just, like, you always had to find something to do. Like, you had to make your own fun. And sometimes I feel like that's what Pittsburgh is. Like, if you look for it, there's a ton of cool shit going on in the city. There are tons of amazing venues, like Burning Bridges, ha uh, Slash Hambones, uh, Thunderbird Cafe. Uh, you, have, you have, like, even if you don't want to go drinking, like, the Lawrenceville's popping off, Millvale's popping off. This place is amazing. So, fuck you, Mark. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Fine, I won't take you to spec the next time you're in town, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, thank you for leaving comments. If you are if you are new to to the uh, to the old live stream, uh, this is uh, we're going to be talking about uh, our final story here in just a minute. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, and at the end of the story, I will be uh, uh, I will be I'll be reading your comments and and reacting to those uh and continuing the conversation uh but uh if uh um if you haven't done so uh feel free to hit that like button feel free to hit that share button if you have the ability to donate you you are more than um more, more than welcome to do that becoming a sustaining member or uh otherwise uh i i, I appreciate you guys tuning in hanging out with me chatting with me um, and one of the things I'll do right before I get into this this final story, which is going to be a little bit of a bigger topic, um, I I do maybe want to try to do like a Q and A session, um, and try to curate that. So maybe we'll test that out today. I don't I don't know. We'll see we'll see how people feel at the end of this uh, end of this thing. So, uh, but let us let us venture upon our final final tale. Uh, the final topic of discussion is uh, something I've I've been hearing for the last uh, maybe week and a half, two weeks, um, in in a way to uh, deal with this pandemic that we are uh, currently dealing with, um, and that is something called herd immunity. Right. So this this idea basically. Um, uh, is the idea that you willingly, uh, you know, get the virus or the infection so your body can um, develop its own natural defenses against them and basically prevent you and, a, a, you know, a variety of other people, a, a larger population, um, from being able to spread this vi virus from one person to another because, you know, we develop antibodies and so on and so forth. So what are, what, what let's, let's talk about that in general, right? So, um, what the hell are antibodies? Antibodies are basically, uh, you know, used to fight viruses. Uh, and then your body saves those antiviruses uh, or antibodies. And so that we're ready to take them down the next time. So, you know, um, that's, that's part of the reason why it becomes easier and easier for your body to fight off certain things like colds, it's stuff like that, sore throats and stuff like that. Um, so this is a little bit different than vaccines because uh, vaccines uh, are, are particles that we create that resemble the viruses and then let your body create the antibodies that they need uh, to fight off the viruses uh, should it infect you in the past, right? Um, right now, we don't have a virus. Uh, we don't have a, um, sorry, a uh, vaccine for, um, for, for, for COVID-19. Um, and, uh, uh, one of the things that they're saying is if we do this herd immunity, we will get over the threshold of this. And, and this will be more of a long-term plan, uh, for our species as a whole, uh, because the more of the population that gets this virus, the more antibodies and the quicker the illness will possibly die out. That's the theory behind it, right? Um, there's a guy in the UK um, that that was talking about this and said, you know, as much as we want to social distance, um, we also want to um, make sure that our population becomes immune to this virus so that this exact strain 
um, pending that it comes back exactly the way that uh, that it is now, um, it, it, we will become immune to it so that when it keeps coming back or when it starts infecting our population again, um, we will actually have a way to fight back on it, right? So he's saying 60%. 60% of the population need to create a resi resistance to, pr to prevent like this overall spread. Uh, so here are some of the problems with this, or, or not problems, perhaps things that we need to research into, things that we need to look into, uh, is um, one is not sure if people can get sick again and whether this thing acts like the flu or not, right? Um, like one of the things about the flu is that it mutates and changes every year. Now, I'm not a big fan of getting the the, the flu vaccine. Um, I don't think I've gotten a flu shot in forever. I don't think I've gotten the flu in quite some time either. Um, and I don't know if that's luck or, or what it is. Um, but it's also one of those things is like once you test positive and then you isolate yourself or or, or if you're just asymptomatic, right? Because that's another way that you that that this thing manifests itself is is it's as, you don't show any symptoms of it at all, or you show very light symptoms of it. It doesn't register very well on the tests that we have in the, in the states. Although the WHO, Korea, and a couple other countries have a test, it's just that the CDC needs to um, stop having a dick measuring contest with itself in the mirror and go talk to these other countries and be like, how could we figure out how to do this test stuff in in the states and make it free? Anyway. Um, there's a lot of people that are talking about building an immunity to this thing and, tr and, and that itself will help not just kind of flatten the curve, right? Everybody keeps talking about flattening the curve. Um, but it'll just help build, like build an immunity because this is not the last one that we're probably going to see. Um, so there's a guy named David Ho. He's a scientist. I think he went on like Rachel Maddow and some of the more mainstream, um, outlets, and he talks about building an immunity in our population and compares the behavior of this uh, uh, of this novel coronavirus to the flu. I know everybody gets mad whenever it's compared to the flu. I'm not saying it's exactly like the flu, but I'm saying some of the scientists are saying that it behaves very similarly to the flu in terms of how it gets into the body and how it um, reacts in the body, right? It's an upper respiratory disease. It's a, that's That's what it is. Um, it's very, very communable. And some, some people are saying that after you, after you get it and go through the two weeks um, where it, it be, you know, becomes like an upper respiratory thing and you shake it off, you might still have the virus in your system for like a month. Like it might just be dormant in your system for a month after that before it gets completely killed out. We're not sure um, because it's, because it's so highly communicable, but, but building that immunity, building those antibodies might be hyper beneficial because quarantining ourselves uh, is creating more problems than it is solutions. And to, it's, it's more, I mean, it's, it's really not, it's really not helping as much um, because I think the numbers are probably higher than what we have, because if we quarantined and social distanced ourselves uh, and, and, you know, a week after we did that, we had a um, a bunch of tests uh, and a bunch of field hospitals set up. Sure, okay, that might be one thing, right? We might have we might have actually we might have actually been able to nip this thing in the bud by saying, okay, we have we have X amount of cases here. This this thing is going to work, and now we have to you know we're going to really ramp up this economic stimulus that we can give to people. Um, but that's not what we did. We just kind of isolated and we argued about how much money poor people need to get uh, while they are isolated, can't afford food, can't afford their health care, can't afford to drive their car uh, and go get groceries, take care of their kids, take care of their families. Like we just kind of bitched and moaned about it. And then we gave a $4 trillion slush fund to corporations. Like that's not a way to fucking deal with this. Like everything that we have done in the States is antithetical to the way that logic would dictate or anybody with like seven to 12 neurons would make a decision about this thing. Um, so how do we kind of implement something like herd immunity? Do we just get everybody back into the public uh, and, and just be like, Hey, just uh, everybody just start kissing each other. 
just everybody start licking flagpoles. It's not what this is, right? Because we have a tendency to just fucking go extreme with these things. We love it as a people. It's just like an idea pops up and they're like, hey, what about herd immunity? Oh, so you just want everybody to fucking get sick? That's what you want? You're a fucking monster, okay? That's how genocides happen. It's like, fucking relax. So one of the ideas that's being proposed is uh, to do it in phases. Like you, you get people out in certain age groups, right? So you say, okay, this age group can go out this this section can go out but you would still have um you know like the like the the elderly folks you don't want them to to go out all the time that's um they're the highest of all risks if you're immunocompromised you don't want to go out as much because you're you're at a higher risk um so right now the data from germany is showing that 95 percent of the people are asymptomatic or show very light symptoms right a light cough maybe a cold something like that so those people are probably the ones that you kind of want out, you know, in the world, kind of spreading this thing around, seeing, and then once they kind of test positive, it's like, okay, go home and take care of yourself. Um, the vaccine for this thing is 12 to 18 months away, which means that we can't be quarantined for 12 to 18 months because there is no economic fucking plan and there's no mental health plan and there's no system in place for 12 to 18 months to keep us sane. Like we're people are losing their shit at like at right now. Like there's, there's some of you that are stir crazy that can't sit and watch this video. Like, like you can't sit and watch a one hour thing um, because everybody gets stir crazy and wants to be outside and I'm not saying don't go outside. I'm just saying it's just not going to work for that long. It's barely worked for two weeks, you know? Oh, one of my beard hairs got in my mouth. I'm sorry, guys. That was weird. Um, yeah. Um, so there are some stories of some people that um, have been tested for it, and after they tested positive, they still they still had it, right? They got they they tested they got po they tested positive, they got home, uh, they they took care of themselves. Um, two three weeks passed, they came back, they got retested, and it was still there. Um, the percentage, I think there was like one or two cases of that in Japan where they saw something like that. So there is going to be anomalies, but these anomalies are, but they might, but this is the thing is like, they might not be commutable, right? So they might test positive again. And there, there just might be the residuals of that virus. Like there are certain viruses that lie dormant in our body, um, before they, before they become active again. And, um, that's just, uh, that's just a thing that happens. So, you know, they might not be commutable. They, they might not be able to transmit the disease, uh, but they might, they, they now are probably resistant to the virus that they can't be infected again. They, what they should do is test to see if there are new antibodies in these people. Um, so the other question is, will this become seasonal like the flu, which means that we really need to get a plan together because if this thing pops up again next year, and, you know, it's like, oh, shit, it's COVID season. Are we just going to shut down these countries? Are we going to, like, lock down, uh, like, everywhere we go? We're, we're just going to take democratic countries and turn them into authoritarian states with, with you know, curfews. And, and, and we, 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 we cut out businesses. And we're just like, all right, everybody fend for yourself. Let's see how quickly this can turn into Mad Max and then back into a functioning society again. Like, uh, that's not... A viable plan. So like the number suggests, 60% of us need to be infected to it in order for herd immunity to be um, a, a successful thing, a successful idea. And realistically, I think we, we probably have that number. Um, or, or we might be able to get close to, especially in the United States, we might be able to get close to it because we haven't really taken any precautions against this thing other than the social distancing and the, and the quarantine and the lockdowns and all that stuff. But even that's really led to a lot more hysteria and panic than it has anything else. Right. Like, like the social distancing, everybody panicked and like, they were like, don't, be in crowds of 200 or more people and then they were just like oh shit we got to run to a whole foods and every grocery store in the city and then what did we see 
We saw 200 plus people cramming into a grocery store, rubbing up against each other, throwing each other into the, you know, the dairy aisle with cereal boxes flying everywhere. Like we, everybody, nobody's socially distanced because they were panicking. They were, they were, it, that's what you do when you kind of ring the panic alarms, you don't make good decisions. Um, so we, and, and even that took a really long time to get. Uh, I mentioned this at, at some point. It's like in February, I got sick. I had a, I had a higher, I like, I had like a, a mild fever. I was coughing. Um, I was congested. Um, and, uh, you know, I just thought it was kind of the turn of the weather because I was in the New England area. I was in Vermont and it went from t like 30 something to seven overnight. And I, and that's when I really felt it. But who knows? There were no testing facilities around. There, the, all, the tests at some places cost 150 bucks, which is not something I can afford. You know, like even if you had good insurance, it was it was expensive to to get the test because they just didn't fucking get it. Like they didn't understand what this was. Um, and they and, you know, the American hubris was like, well, it'll never actually come here. We've never we've never had it come here. So fuck you kind of a thing. But we waited so long to take any sort of precautionary or preventative measures or have any sort of plan in place that there is a good chance that about 60 percent of us are probably infected with this virus, right? And because it's asymptomatic, because you, and now every time somebody like coughs, we freak out. Like we're two steps away from ALEC, the American Legislative Executive Council that is funded by the Koch brothers to be like, we are gonna, every time you cough, we're gonna, um, we're, we're gonna take $100 out of your bank account and give it to a pipeline. Like that's, we're like getting to that level there. Like how, how quickly is that gonna spread, right? And, and like, I still see posts where some people are just like, I, I'm coughing and I kind of have a headache and I don't know, maybe I have it. Dear God, no. Like, uh, okay. So that's why those testing facilities are, are, are super important. Um, and nobody wants to do this, right? People don't want to do this. This herd immunity thing is scary to a lot of people. Because they're like, what if I get sick? And, and there's all this stigma and extremism because they're putting out all these numbers like 80,000 reported cases. Oh, my goodness. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of cases out there of people that are testing positive for COVID-19. But the fatality rates are rather low. And the most of the fatalities um, are coming from elderly people. 80, 80, I think it's like 80 plus now or maybe 70 plus is, is more of the realistic um, number that we probably look at. But uh, younger folks, people kind of in their, you know, in their teens, in their twenties, thirties, forties, that's, that's a lower percentage, you know? So, but the, but the problem is, is even if you're asymptomatic or anything like that, if you test positive, like there's such a stigma surrounding these, these viruses and anything that gets labeled as a pandemic, you know, like people people when they find out that they are they have some kind of any sort of illness like this uh, end up being treated like lepers right that's kind of what we do they're like get the fuck away from me oh my god did you just cough did you oh my god did you cough in front of somebody who's got the pure out spray major out spray major out like we just fucking freak out right like this is what we did with hiv this is this is what we do with the flu. This is what we did with SARS, MERS, and then we get xenophobic and hateful towards each other. Like it's crazy. Uh, so people don't want to do this because if they actively get the virus and they test positive, then they figure all of these stigmas will be will be put onto them. You know, um, we, we we all of these all of these uh, the, like we we talked about shame earlier, right? They they will be shamed um, into and that's not good for your mental health because we're social creatures that need each other. Um, look, flattening the curve without a, a systemic plan to alleviate the spread of this virus, uh, or building immunity is just going to mean that all of this stuff is going to start all over again. So let's say that we do flatten the curve. Let's say we get it down to this point where, okay, cool. Like we're not going to overwhelm the, the, the healthcare system. This amazing, greatest healthcare system in the whole world that can't take care of its sick people, you know, that healthcare system. Um, so we just go back out into the world again. Well, the people that that have not, you know, that that are carriers or anything like that didn't build an immunity to this, this is just going to start all over again. We're just going to start spreading this shit all over again. And then what? We lock ourselves down for another three months? Like, this is not a viable fucking plan. 
So this is this is based on uh, listening to a lot of people and um, TED talks and reading about herd immunity and um, listening to some w what some of these scientists say um, because you know not not only is is it this but there's also weather patterns involved. Um, the virus does I think it's like 40s 50s is so is the 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 temperature range that it that it thrives in. And once it starts getting warmer or colder than that, it it does not thrive in it as well. Um, so, so this is what I think in terms of what I've read, possibly a good idea of how, how things should be implemented on a larger kind of government scale. Uh, first of all, we need to build dedicated hospitals. Uh, you know, you can use the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, or the National Guard and build dedicated spaces that are um, specifically for the testing, uh, containment, and uh, uh, study of this virus, right? And I think you can do that in the United States. Um, there are a shit ton of abandoned homes and abandoned buildings all throughout this country that currently... I think if you utilize the U.S. Corps of Ar U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the the National Guard, um, and you know, I'm I'm sure communities will come together to to help sterilize and convert some of these places into treatment facilities or testing facilities. Um, Detroit has I know Detroit has a shit ton of uh, uh, shit ton of homes. I know like even in Pittsburgh is like the neighborhood I used to live in. Um, had a ton of abandoned buildings uh, that no one can afford because the whoever, you know, and in, in a time of emergency, this shouldn't really matter. Uh, like whoever bought these buildings wants to charge a, a, a higher amount of rent is like, this is not the time for that. This is not the time for that, right? So even if like the banks own them, if the, like the, the pushback, from the banks being like, we want X amount of money for all this would be, mm, wouldn't look good on the bank part. Like they just would, that would be bad. That would be, I feel like a lot of people would divest from like the banking industry if these buildings are owned by certain financial institutions and they were like, ah, but we need money and we're going to charge the government this much. And the government's like, wait, 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 this is crazy. Like, you know, so, um, I think this is a time for more cooperation and less competition. So then we we build these places, dedicated spaces. Uh, we get to herd immunity that lets us naturally build up these antibodies. We test people, um, and then people that test positive uh, should practice social distancing. This will also then we're going to talk about paid sick leave, emergency UBI measures, and then we monitor these people to make sure that their conditions are not getting worse, even if they are in their 20s, 30s, or 40s, right? Even if they do have, um, uh, even if they are not immunocompromised, um, we monitor them, make sure that their, their symptoms don't get worse. So that is going to mean that we're going to have to keep them in these dedicated facilities for two to three weeks just to keep an eye on them. And then once they're once they're better, once, once they're not showing any symptoms, we have to test them again to make sure that they are not asymptomatically still holding the virus in their body. Um, and if they have built up these antibodies, and then we take these antibodies and we study them and we research these antibodies to figure out whether we can utilize that to come up with a vaccine of some sort, right? Or, or, or utilize them to come up with like a cure of some sort. So that if, if we test somebody and they have the novel coronavirus, we can go, aha, we know exactly how to flood their body with specific antibodies. And we give them a dose of that and say, stay home for two weeks uh, or stay in this section for two weeks. Um, now elderly folks, immunocompromised, uh, self-isolate. That's probably the best course of action here. But here's the thing. Being that we're in a democratic republic, being that most of the world is is democratically elected leaders and stuff like that, um, these folks are going to have to be given a choice and say, hey, this is the best course of action. Um, you know, you can choose not to take it, but I don't know what really that's going to yield. Um, so some people might not choose that. Some people might want to risk their health and go out into the world and participate just like everybody else does and expose themselves to uh, this virus. And, you know, that's up to them at that point, 
And, you know, you can only do so much without being an authoritarian force. And once you kind of veer into that authoritarian, it, it, it's hard to kind of come back. And I'm not saying that, uh, look, the United States and a lot of other democratic governments have a lot of authoritarian measures in place. They do, right? Like right now, these cameras are being used to, to that, spy on us, right? Our phone, our phones are being jacked into, you know, like, any any traffic light where you see a little like they're all watching us like this these are authoritarian measures that this that the um, state department in the intelligence community takes and and kind of rationalizes um and uses something like 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 the fear of a pandemic or the fear of terrorism or something like that uh to put authoritarian measures in place but again this is not the time for that um so it's going to have to be up to the person and hopefully logic will prevail over hubris. Hopefully. I'm not sure. Uh, it's very doubtful, especially in a country like America, where hubris, freedom, and exceptionalism are preached to this kind of religious level um, that people will choose to do whatever the fuck they want because they can. And then we put community programs in place uh, to help the self-isolated. So that means that grocery stores and... Um, you know, certain businesses, mutual aid uh, projects and stuff like that have to be put into place so that these people are taken care of. Um, that's what I think is the best course of action now with everything that's being put into place, right? We need economic, we need plans for, for economic struggles so that when people have to social distance and when people have to kind of be, be in these facilities and let the herd immunity take place, um, that people are taken care of. This is not a profit. This is not time for a profit motive. I've been saying that for weeks. And this is the other thing that I do want to talk about too, is when you talk about herd immunity and, and willingly getting yourself sick, people kind of freak the fuck out about it. Um, but look, the world's not a sterile place. There are germs, viruses, bacteria all over the place. In fact, our body is actually riddled with them. There is a ton of germs and bacteria that live in your body. The world is not a sterile place. It's not a sterile environment. So stop trying to make it a sterile environment all the fucking time. That's how you become immunocompromised. That's how you start freaking out that if a virus comes into your body and you don't know how to, and your body can't build antibodies to it, then everybody's going to die. Even though the, the, the evidence and the science is showing that yes, there are a lot of people testing positive for this thing. And yes, it's a highly communicable disease, but the death rate and the fatality rate is relatively low. And again, this is not me saying that go and get the virus and, and just live your life, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, nonchalantly, I'm saying we need to, we need to, use biology to our advantage. We need to know that the systems that are in our body are far more efficient and far more logical than the systems that we made up, like fucking capitalism and this government structure that we have in place that isn't fucking doing anything to take care of the world around us. The quarantine people means that they don't get health care. They don't, some, some of them, like I mentioned earlier, uh, can't get food, can't go out and, you know, like they can't go and do their jobs. Some people don't have telecommuting jobs. Some people are not getting paid. Some people can't afford to go get basic checkups that they might need to. That means that whatever basic checkups that they might have, um, that might get worse. So let's say somebody has an asthma problem. That asthma problem can get worse because they can't go see a doctor. And most of these doctors aren't even open, right? And this is a, this, I, by the way, let me make a statement right now before I make this next thing here is I, what I'm about to mention is like a very low fucking level thing. But I go and get OMT, right? Which is osteopathic manipulative therapy because one of my hips is like displaced and it's causing my, because my hamstrings are overly tight in one leg and it's causing a lot of pain in my, or was causing a lot of pain in my one leg. But I had to cancel that appointment. Um, and they were basically like, we're not really taking any new appointments for a month. And that really sucks because it does help me out quite a bit. But that's a low level thing. There are people with far higher issues, right? Like that, that need to be checked out that can't go get checked out because they're in quarantine and these doctor's offices aren't even fucking open. So what needs to be put into place is a global healthcare system to deal with stuff like this. We need like a global emergency initiative um, 
because had this originated in smaller, less financially stable countries, they might have not had enough doctors or they might have not had, you know, the, the healthcare initiative to, to really know how to respond to it, contain it and spread and spread this epidemic. And it might have gotten far worse had it come from a, a smaller, less financially stable country. Right. Look, even America doesn't really have a healthcare system in place uh, to, to take care of this thing. Um, the, the hope is the hope that I think this system has, or, or the hope that I think this system wants is that a bunch of poor people will just die off and we don't have to have this argument about Medicare for all. And we can just continue to, to, to push a profit driven system and be like, see all the people that could afford it. They all got see Tom Hanks, Idris Elba, all the rich people. That's what you got to do. You just got to become rich. Like they can make that argument and be like Medicare for all doesn't matter. Uh, when really that's not going to happen. Okay. Poor people are the ones that are like, the have the strongest immune systems, right? Like we have been battling fucking illness after illness with no health insurance, with no time to go see a doctor. Because if we go see a doctor and take a day off, that means that we can't afford rent, food, childcare, or any of these other enormous bills that we have been riddled with for years. So we just fucking ride it out. We just sweat it out right? We build up these antibodies, we build up these immunities. And so our immune systems are way fucking stronger. And if we get it, if the poor get it, we're probably going to get through it. Okay. Right? Like if all 99% of us get it, holy shit, this thing will like this virus will be just be like, what the fuck is happening? And it will just die out immediately. Uh, but the rich, uh, the rich are weak because they are looking for that sterilized world. That's what they want. They want that germ-free, pristine, sterilized world. Uh, and uh, and really, um, I think the uh, the biggest reason we should do herd immunity is that eventually, I think what will happen is that the virus will eat the rich. So that's a I think that's a win-win for everybody. You know, we get rid of the 1%. Uh, and, uh, and, and then we start building community-based efforts. We start taking care of the middle, middle class. We start having a middle class again. Um, so, you know, we'll leave a couple. We'll leave a couple rich people around, you know. Um, we'll, we'll need some people to pull levers and stuff like that. Uh, whoever, if, if there are any rich that end up surviving, uh, I think we should put them in meaningless factory jobs and just pull levers and push buttons for like eight hours, but it doesn't really do anything, right? I feel like it's a great plan. It's a good plan. <laughs> uh, what we also need are global lines of communication um, and response teams. Meaning this thing possibly originated in from some exotic animal uh, in China, possibly, right? Like we that's that's the that's the assumption right now um is that that's where it originated and china didn't really do a good job of a lot of countries are your fault i'm not I'm not blaming i'm not saying that this is only china's fault i've, I've also talked about how america has fucking failed uh but they didn't you know they didn't communicate they 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 were probably embarrassed Right, they were they 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 felt humiliated that their country might have uh, accidentally come up with something like this. Um, so we need a better way. Like, if China would have contacted some of the, you know, this global line of communication that we could set up, they could be like, "Hey, we're seeing this thing; it's spreading around. We're going to try to do our best. We might need some medical help. We're not particularly sure." Okay, cool. Here's here's what we've seen so far. Just be careful if they're flights coming in from China, we've tried to ground as much of them as possible and try to contain this thing, blah, 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 right? Um, and the rest of the government goes, great, Every, everybody else send us your your measures of testing, let's figure out what we need to do, let's let's make some containment, you know, facilities or whatever and make sure these people coming in and take care of our employees at the airports and stuff like that. And, and, and now you have a way to contain this thing, possibly. Um, but without a plan, you know, if we're just going to say social distance, social distance, quarantine, quarantine, lockdown, flatten the curve, flatten. The, well, that's not a fucking, these are stopgap measures at best. Um, nobody's building up an immunity. 
if this thing comes back, because guess what? This is not the only fucking virus that's going to show up. SARS, MERS, all, all these upper respiratory diseases showed up. That's what they are. Um, these are those are all upper respiratory diseases, and we've seen a, a bunch of them. And this is not going to be the last one. So why not build an immunity to this? Why not? Why not then consistently start making a plan of how to deal with something like this? So without that, I you know I I don't know. So I I wouldn't I wouldn't particularly say like go and cough on your neighbors or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying, let's just be logical about it. Let's understand what the science of it is. Let's understand, you know, let's educate the populace a little bit more. Stop stirring them up. Stop trying to scare them. Um, it's one way or the other is really what it is. You have, you, you have one side being like, well, it's nothing. We should all be going out. We should all be doing anything. We should be ready to die for the economy if that's what it is. And that's a fucking insane plan. And then the other thing is just like keep us all locked down and stimulate us from from uh, our homes and, and keep us that way. And, and there's got to be a middle ground um, somewhere in that because both of these plans are so extreme and they're not working. Neither one of these plans are working. That's the other part of it is how long do we have to try something that's just straight up not fucking working? Uh, so let's use some logic. Let's let's hope hope that we that's the next phase is is we try some uh, ideas that um, implement herd immunity and and get us back on track. You know, I think I and 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 then come up with a long term solution, a long term solution, not these half half measures uh, and fake shit. Um, so yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. You guys, did, you guys just kind of listened. I like that. Uh, I, I kind of liked it. But uh, if you guys have any comments or anything, um, you know, feel free to leave them. Even even if you watch this live stream later, um, what I do with them, what I'm going to be doing with them is chopping them up, clipping them up into uh, little segments and stuff. Um, and if you so you, the, and then I'll put them up on like YouTube and stuff like that, um, and then I'll do a live replay on YouTube. So if you're if if this is somebody that that wa ended up, ended up only watching stuff um, on the YouTube's, that's it, it's going to be available there as well. Uh, but this will be up, um, you know, after after the live stream. So if somebody catches it post post stream, um, you know, feel free to leave a comment, uh, and I will. Uh, I will, I will probably respond to it cause I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm doing so. Yeah. Um, I'm putting out these videos every day. Um, uh, and, uh, Monday through, well, really Sunday through Thursday is very similar to this format. It is, um, talking about three stories, three ideas. Um, and, uh, this one went on for a little bit longer, uh, than I, than I anticipated, but that's okay. Uh, you guys hung in there. Um, and then Fridays, I'm going to talk about one topic. I'm calling it philosophy Fridays. Uh, that's, you know, kind of a big idea kind of thing and, and diving into the philosophy and, and that sort of stuff around philosophy, sociology, human behavior, um, like one big idea to kind of dig into as much as I can. And then on Saturday is storytelling Saturday, where we kind of veer away from, uh, the news stories and give ourselves a little bit of a break from all this stuff. And I just tell you guys a, a story about from, from touring or what have you and all that sort of stuff. And most of those things I'm not doing live, uh, the way that this is formatted this right now, I'm only doing once a week. Um, but if, uh, if more and more people want to want me to do more of this live stuff, I might start implementing, uh, doing more and more live stuff like this rather than uh, pre-recording and then premiering it, uh, which is gonna mean that the first five minutes of it are gonna be me fiddling around and trying to invite people as much as possible. Unless you guys just automatically get notifications of when I go live anyway, uh, that would be that would be stellar, that'd be super if you guys did that. Uh, the, I am still questioning how long I'm gonna keep this this robe because it's, uh, it's very warm, uh, but some of you people seem to very much like it and that's, that's cool. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but as you can see, I just changed the little banner, the ticker at the bottom there is, um, please like, share, 
and and subscribe to to it in any capacity that you would want to because usually content like this doesn't get shown out to people uh, especially when we're talking about alternative ideas uh, we're talking about community driven efforts we're talking about protests and activist movements um, anti-establishment uh, you know even just basic logic stuff they do not show it to people they don't want people to see it so they kind of they they kind of suppress it a little bit so uh, I very much depend on people liking, sharing, subscribing to it, letting yourself know when um, when I'm releasing content, uh, and that'll also decrease the time that I fiddle at the at the top of the show. <laughs> so, um, and if you can, once again, the uh, um, if, if you have the means to, by no means is this an absolute necessity. Uh, if you can donate, uh, that would be. Uh, immensely helpful. Um, there are uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, there's already a bunch of people that have become patrons and sustaining members. There's a bunch of people that have already donated, which is super fucking sweet. Very, very nice of you guys to do. And every little bit helps in this moment of crisis. I've, I've virtually lost uh, every every single way to <laughs> make an income right now. Um, and and so I'm doing more of these videos to, to kind of keep in touch with you guys, keep working um, on ideas and material and stuff like that. I am trying to figure out how to do a possible live comedy show of some kind, um, possibly even through 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 this this platform here um and uh but I'm, and I'm not exactly sure just yet as to how to do it uh i'm going to talk to a, a few friends that have ventured into that territory uh but uh yeah i i i am i am attempting to work on that i might be using something called zoom that might be a way to do it i'm not sure but uh keep on the lookout for that um and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be putting out a shit ton of videos, shit ton of content. Uh, so if you guys are interested, that then then you got you you know, there's a bunch of stuff coming. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for everybody that left a comment. Thank you for everybody uh, that uh, uh, that tuned in, that shared this, that liked this, that has already become sustaining members and have donated. Uh, I love you guys. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go eat and uh chill out for for the rest of sunday uh and and maybe maybe i'll maybe i'll do what what jay's doing uh, sometime this week and and look at some 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 more uh, some more things in stoicism and marxism uh maybe we'll do that uh but till till tomorrow uh stay taboo and we'll see you on the road folks bye